April 13th, the year is 2022, I'm 52 years of age, so just had my birthday on April the 9th, and I was extremely busy the past few days preparing to move, yes, I'm moving, yes, I'm moving, 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 um, I found a place I'm going to be moving to, and, um, Uh, I'm moving to a new place and I'm over there working right now so I should be out of here okay, well, it's great so anyway I had a great birthday you know birthdays are time to reflect like, over the past few weeks I've been having these conversations with a lot of these guys that are way younger than me I don't know a lot of people hit me up and if y'all I know a lot of you guys hit me up and you want to talk and chat and I'm, sometimes I'm just just too busy and I get phone calls from a lot of younger guys who want to talk, and I get it. And the, you know, being black in America is complicated. Being black and gay is even more complicated. But just being black, period, living in this country can be harsh if you don't have someone to communicate. When we sometimes take things personally, we think, oh, I'm going through this all alone. You're not alone. You are not alone. We going through it too. So there's a lot of guys hit me up and I, and I always think about my birthday every year that I'm grateful and thankful to have made it to another year. Because so many people have lost their lives just in the past year. And I know so many guys who were in their late 20s, early 30s who have passed away just in the past 12 to 24 months. I'm like, damn, all these young guys dying, you know. You know, whether it's suicide or a heart attack or a car accident or shooting, a lot of shootings, a lot of people. I and the crazy part is I know a lot of people have been shot and killed over the past few years. I'm thinking, damn, because gun violence has gotten so crazy. And so last night, I'll give you an example, I, I was coming down the highway from my new place and speeding down the highway, and then the, 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 all of a sudden the dashboard lit up. Ding! I said, what is that? I had no gas. I said, it's 11 o'clock at night. I ain't got no gas out here. I'm thinking, where in the hell? It was about 10 o'clock, actually. So I said, fuck it, I'm going to get some gas in the morning. I am not going to no gas station out here this time, and I'm going to slow this truck down and take this car home and park. I got multiple cars at the house, so I will park this shit and get some gas in the morning. So I went to the Kroger grocery store by my house, and when I got over there, the gas station's still open, and a lot of people would get out and say, they're still open, because I thought they closed early. So I went over there and got some gas. But just something as simple as getting gas late at night, you begin to think, like, okay, do I really want to get this gas? And when I went over there to the Kroger um, they have security in there. And a lot of people, I even a girl who works inside the Kroger, but she was out sweeping around, cleaning up in our park, and we were talking. I said, y'all would be close. She said, hey, we about to close. <laughs> so I got my gas. But I've always been cautious about stuff like that. Even just getting gas late at night, it's like, oh, look at your surroundings, you know. The worst part is when you're traveling down the highway and you get off an exit someplace and you have no clue where you're at and what's going on. And you just trying to get some damn gas. And you don't even know you might be in the middle of the worst hood you know, on planet Earth. You just jumped off the highway, you start gas, and get some gas. And that's why I try to keep that gas station, gas tank full. And don't drive at nighttime, nowhere in America. I get up early in the morning, make sure they, when I left Miami that last time, I made sure before I went to that hotel that night, that gas, I had everything, gas station, gas tank full. Got back to the hotel, packed all my stuff up, had it ready to roll out. We got the little cart, had it sitting in my room sleeping. <sighs> Woke up, got dressed, pushed that cart on out, threw that shit in that car and haul ass. Uh, but um, I've had a lot of guys reach out to me for my YouTube channel, and I'm always grateful for that because I don't mind talking to people. And they call from all over, from New York, Chicago, Texas, Houston, Miami, Arkansas. Idaho, I'm like, someone talking to you, Idaho, you watch my videos in Idaho? And they send emails, and I talk, some guy sent me an email, and I haven't responded to these emails, I've been so busy, I have forgive me, I haven't been able to make videos, I haven't been able, but it all changed, because I'll be in my new place soon. And I'm happy with this, the, the, the positive things that happen. I'm grateful. Um, I've always taken life seriously. I've always taken my life seriously, because it can end at any moment. Um, I've never lived a reckless lifestyle, meaning I've never want, did things that put me in harm's way, purposely. You know, I look at these guys in Atlanta and the type of lives they live. 
the lifestyle he lives, the dangerous things they do, and how they put their lives at risk, and then how, how things go awry for so many of them. Things go awry, and, um, you know, I was just sitting there thinking, these pictures behind me on this wall, these are, I've had these pictures now going on 20, these pictures on my wall are older than some of the people who called me. Mm -hmm. These pictures were, I bought these pictures in the 90s. In 1998, 99. I brought, met an artist who's deceased now, unfortunately, and I brought all the pictures I could from him over the years. I've sold quite a few of them, but I kept some of the ones. I got about 10 of them, and I kept two in my garage. Um, but I've had them for years. This was an artist, a well-known artist here in Atlanta. I've, I've been holding on to his artwork. You never know, it might be worth something one day. Um, when, he used to, when, he, when I used to build a renovate house, I put his artwork in the house, and people love the artwork because I was... Well, his art is beautiful. And they said, well, we bought a house, and we want those pictures. And I said, well, you can have those pictures because, you know, I, that's why I stuck the pictures. I didn't find me another artist, original art, artist like them found one. I was so busy, I wanted to go to the Dogwood Festival this past weekend, and I couldn't make it down there. So I was trying to get there so I can find an artist because I need some artwork. Oh, shit, I need a, I need a little, I like original artwork. The reason why I brought that up is some of these pictures are actually older than people who are, who, who these pictures have survived, and then other folks I've met have not. So in the course of the, the time period that I've known these pictures, people have been born on planet Earth and, and dead and gone, but these pictures still exist. So when I'm dead and gone, these pictures will still be floating around in somebody's house somewhere. And so for five million dollars, what was I wake up? I'd be in my grave and sit up. What happened? After you get five million dollars in damn pictures, I had them shits on my wall for years. <coughs> the white folks get five million dollars for that shit. You know, there's some white folks here. There's some niggas come by. They they, they too busy buying expensive ass shoes. They look at my pictures and say, "I want ten thousand dollars." Hey, you give me ten thousand dollars. Well, every time I talk to these guys, the reason why I set up this YouTube channel was I didn't, I didn't, I wanted to talk about things that um, I went through, the troubles and issues I've had in my life. And I just hope people learn from it. That's all. Some people are embarrassed to talk about this stuff. I talk about everything on here. And I was criticized for this. And people, you know, people criticize me because I talk about stuff I've been through. Some people say, you should you share too much. Well, I'll share what I want to share. I don't share everything, but I share enough that I'm hoping it helps someone else. I'm hoping that the 52 years I've lived on this earth helps someone else with their issues and that maybe my life can change their life. You know, I'm not I'm just a guy sitting here on the internet. There's nothing special about me, no different than anybody else. I'm just willing to talk about my issues, my problems, and things I've been through, the stuff that I see. There's this heavy criticism that people say, I don't like gays, I don't like black people, and I don't like white people. I'm like, okay, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm a black gay man. I love who I am. I love black people. I have nothing against white people. I love white people. The few I've met that love me back. Now, I can love all y'all motherfuckers if you ain't loving me. I don't like some of these Christians. We love everybody. And that's a goddamn lie. I ain't Christian. So, I love people who love me. Black damn sure love me, and I can try to get along and love everybody. I don't, you know, I don't all this. I'm anti-gay. I'm anti-black. I don't like black. I'm like, where do y'all get this shit from? What do y'all? Are you all listening to the videos? I mean, I don't get it, but hey, I tend not to worry about that. I, I tend, I tend not to um, worry myself about this crazy stuff. Somebody just sent me an article. Dated April 12, 2002, two children found tied up and dead inside Miami apartment and police investigating. Good yeah, Lord. Homicide detectives were investigating late Tuesday after a woman called 911 and two young children were found tied up and dead inside an apartment in Miami's Little River neighborhood. I don't know where that is. Yeah, I know I'm going to move to Miami, but I don't know these neighborhoods. The women believed to be, the woman believed to be the mother of children called police. She's having a mental crisis in Iris. She was crazy. The woman was 41 years of age. That's awful. And they, the kids' ages were six and three. I just said about them pictures hanging behind me.
So anyway, I'm, I try to make these videos. I'm hoping that people are learning. I've learned from doing these videos. I've learned from talking to people. I try to give advice to people. I learn, and I learn myself. And I'm never too late. It ain't nothing like old food. And I try, over the years, there's some, been some things I've said in these videos that I changed my mind about. I changed my mind. People are entitled to change their mind about stuff. If you're contradicting yourself, no, I'm not contradicting myself. Something I said five years ago, or ten years ago, when I started this, over ten years ago, I might have changed my mind about it. People do change their mind about stuff. We are allowed to have different opinions and, and process and grow as an individual. You can't grow as a person if you still think things are the same. I have grown as a person, I believe. I reflect and think about stuff. So that's what people are supposed to do. You're not supposed to stay the same. You're supposed to grow big world out here amazing opportunities out here it's all up to you and what you what you think I see amazing opportunities out here some people say you're so negative but I'm not a negative person I don't get maybe people take my words and twist it I'm like what did I say that makes me so negative I sometimes view life realistically we I live in reality I live in the real world I can't live in a fantasy world like my mother I love my mother. She lives in a fantasy world. She's dreaming of God and Jesus and unicorns and heaven and all of them. I don't got time for that nonsense. I have to stay friendly, fruity in the real world so I can help pay her bills over there because she can't afford that apartment she's in or the car that she's driving or the insurance or the health insurance and stuff that are the, or the Medicare. I pay for all of that for her. So I can't sit here and get on my knees and pray to the heavens that all this shit going to get paid. We'll both be homeless and carless and no insurance, and walk around here looking crazy as hell. No, I have to stay in the real world. Firmly rooted in the real world. That's why I'm doing this video today, because I feel like I ain't made a video for that. I gotta pay my rent. So many amazing opportunities on the internet, and I keep telling people, I've talked to people, say, I don't know what to do here, it's extra income. Why don't you start a cooking channel on YouTube? Hell. People don't know how to cook no more. And when I'm looking for a recipe to cook, I, first place that I go, I was cooking something a few weeks ago. And I always go to YouTube and look. And they'll show you how to cook and prepare. To, there's so many opportunities. What are y'all waiting for? You'd be dead and gone if you're sitting around waiting for a miracle to happen. I'm not waiting for a miracle. When I want something, I get up and I go do it and do what I need to be done. I've never... Yeah. If I want something, I can achieve it. And I've always believed that and firmly believed that if you get up, if you put a dream, you have a dream or a vision, besides getting some dick up your ass or chasing behind some pussy or some damn ass, you have a dream or a vision, and you get up and, and, and strive towards it and, and do whatever you have to do to get it accomplished. You can get it done. And that's what I've been doing for the past 52 years. I've always had dreams, desires. I didn't sit up in the house waiting for some miracle to happen. I didn't drive around. I have a lot of religious friends. And they lives, they suffer. Because they're waiting for a miracle. And it ain't coming. I'm not waiting for a miracle. I am the miracle. What I mean by that is, I if I want to make something happen, if I want to make that miracle happen, I better use these two hands in this brain to get up off my ass and achieve it. I'm not hurting over here. Um, I'm happy. Yeah, that's why when people had to make sure all these crazy messages, I'm thinking, wow, what these people, I mean, what have I said that, there were some times I even thought about leaving YouTube because I was like, people keep twisting my words. But I love what I do on YouTube. So I don't, shit, I don't care what they think about me and what they thought I said. I'll clarify it again for you. But at the end of the day, you can't help everybody. This is as good as it gets for me. I try to help you as best as I can. But you can't come through this dough. Mm -mm. You can stay over on the other side of YouTube. And I'm not against it. It's funny because the last few weeks, as I'm preparing to move, I've been ripping around and I've been going to all these places. And people recognize me. And me say, oh, I knew you're the guy from me. I say, oh, thank you. And they, they, you know, 
I didn't realize that many people that, that was having such an impact on such a large group of people of all ages and races. The, the crazy part is I've had more white people post me recently. He's like, I know you. You know, white folks think we all look alike. I said, mm, you know me from where? Your neighbor? Oh, no, YouTube nigga. They don't use the term nigga. I, I, I use it though. I said, oh. So, yeah, they recognize me, which is unusual for white folks. You know, they all say we look alike. And they be thinking, hey, how are you doing? I'm not your neighbor. I don't live down the street from you. You don't know me. They say, yeah, they know me. But anyway. But anyway, I'm sitting here drinking my coffee. This coffee didn't get cold. I need a new coffee maker for my birthday. Ain't nobody sent one over here yet. Where my coffee? Where my birthday gift? I ain't get shit from nobody. No birthday gifts. Doc at least went down to uh, um, the Dogwood Festival and got me some original artwork. That shit cheap down there at that damn dog. When people desperate to sell that artwork, they didn't win two years without selling a picture. They don't have, hey, please buy these pictures, huh? Fifty dollars. I thought it was three hundred. It takes fifty. You know, the crazy part, the guy who I bought these pictures from, he was having a rough time at that time. And I would go to his warehouse and buy all his pictures, all of them. He, he was making artwork, making artwork, making artwork. He had some issues going on, too. And I think I was one of the few people who was keeping that man alive. I need another starving artist like that. I'm dead ass serious. <laughs> See me? Y'all know some artist friends? I need to I'm buying and moving to a big place. I need some new artwork and shit. Yeah, that man was... um. He's having some issues, and he ended up making art because he couldn't work no place. And because his art was beautiful, and his health was declining. And I would go over there. I actually felt sad for him. I would just buy all this stuff up. I just buy it. It was beautiful stuff, beautiful. And I told you, you know, I, I must say, over the years, me and Earl would put the pictures in the house and paint the walls, and people would say, "We want this house, but we want those pictures too." And we would literally design our houses around the artwork, just like I did this wall behind. He me now I painted this wall based upon a picture I wanted to compliment the artwork here and I've got about 20 of his pictures I got a few in stories maybe more than that so we use I'm gonna, I'm gonna put those pictures to use but you took a take somebody who was not doing well and this is before the internet existed and he could have made probably made a lot more money had he had access to a platform like YouTube or Instagram or Facebook but this, this stuff didn't exist back then this man was standing on the street corner I met him on the street corner at Briarcliff Road and um, there was Briarcliff Road in North Street Hills. He had he was like out his artwork lined up on the street, and I ended up buying all that stuff, then going to his warehouse, and he was just suffering. This was back in the nineties, and he's having health problems. And then he met this chick, and I bought pictures from her. So I was buying, and I sold all her stuff. Her stuff, her stuff was beautiful too. Where did I do with her pictures? All her stuff is gone. Her stuff is gone. I kept his stuff. Sometimes I regret having sold his artwork, but it's life, you know. You know, it's just, you know, I can't hold on to everything. I can't hoard everything. But I really wish I had hoarded some of this original artwork he had because this stuff is beautiful. But anyway, I, it is 9.30 in the morning. I've been up since 6.30, and I've been trying to get to this. this I need, I got a bunch of stuff I need to do today because I'm in the process, like I said, I'm about to move. And I need to uh, get back over there and finish what I'm working on. Got a surprise for you guys. Yeah, for surprise. But anyway, today it is Wednesday. It is April 13th. I just had my 52nd birthday. I need a coffee maker. A nice one too. Shit, hell. I don't know if this coffee maker ain't working too good. Literally, it ain't working. Throw it away. They just ruin my damn coffee. You know how the coffee, it grinds in of your damn coffee. I tried to fix this thing. I just bought the thing about a year ago. But anyway, I just go buy a new one. Uh, anyway, thank you all for being on this journey with me. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for sharing my videos. Thank you for being inviting me into your home and into your life. I'm nobody special, y'all. But thank you, and I appreciate that. That's the best birthday gift you could have given me is by clicking and watching my videos and sharing them. And I appreciate that a thousand times. Anyway, today is Wednesday, April 13th, the year 2022. I'm out of here. You guys enjoy the rest of the day, and I'll be back. I got a surprise. I'm out of here.